Welcome to the big experiment where we are seeking to answer that question that nobody's ever really asked before. How many rubber bands does it take to implode a watermelon? Now we're going to be getting to uh, doing the experiment very shortly, but I thought it'd be really nice to find out a bit of background science behind our two main ingredients, the rubber band and the watermelon. Starting with the not so humble watermelon. Oh, this one's rather large in fact. A watermelon is technically a berry, believe it or not, that's what sort of scientists classify it as, and they grow on vines, vines that kind of snake around the ground. Watermelons grow in places where it's relatively warm, so sort of the tropics all the way down to the temperate zone. So in Australia you'll find watermelons growing actually in most states somewhere, except Tasmania I think. Now if it's the cooler months like winter, the watermelons you're using are most likely coming from northern Western Australia, the Northern Territory, or Northern Queensland. We do grow quite a few watermelons in Australia. However, China produces a huge amount of watermelons on a world scale. Something like 80% of the world's watermelons come from China. It's pretty amazing. Right, so how do you grow something this large from a plant? Well, it all starts with a seed, like so many plants, grows into a vine, and then you get a flower. The flower is pollinated, and it's that pollinated flower that ends up growing into the watermelon. As the watermelon grows, it turns into this sort of roughly spherical shape. Sometimes they're a bit long and sometimes they're quite round. Unless it's square. I know, weird, but you can have square watermelons. Not naturally, of course. People have made them square. So when the fruit is developing, some people put like a square cage around the watermelon and it sort of forces it to grow in this square shape. It's a little bit weird, it's more done as a novelty, and I don't think they taste very nicely. But there you go, square watermelons do exist. Oh, now I've talked about watermelon seeds before. You've probably seen watermelon seeds, the black things inside a watermelon. Although these days, most watermelons are seedless. Which is a little bit weird that you can grow a fruit that doesn't have seeds inside it. But it's got to do with sort of the genetics or the chromosomes. Effectively, when the flower is pollinated, it turns into a fruit that doesn't produce seeds. It's something special that they do with the seeds that they grow the seedless watermelons from. Pretty interesting. Anyway, that's enough about watermelons for the moment. Although, I should say this guy here is about, about seven kilos, I think it was. I'll have to check the receipt from the store I bought it. The biggest watermelon ever grown is not seven or eight or nine or 10 or 12. It was about 159 kilograms. I can only imagine how large that was. Now, our second ingredient, is a rubber band. You might not have ever thought much about rubber bands before, but they're really quite interesting. These rubber bands, the, the sort of brownie colored ones, are made from something called latex. And latex also comes from a plant, just like the watermelon did. Latex is actually a milky substance that comes out of the bark of a rubber tree. So it's not sap, it's different to sap. And that milky substance gets turned into latex rubber, and that latex rubber gets turned into the stuff that makes these rubber bands. In fact, before it's a rubber band, it's one long tube of latex and then it gets cut up and turned into rubber bands. Now, something you can do with a rubber band that's quite interesting is if you take the rubber band and you put it up against your lip, make it sure it's not gonna break because that will be painful. Just touch it on your lip like so and then if you expand it and let it go in, you'll notice something, you'll notice as you pull it apart, it gets hot, and when you let it go, it goes cold, which is really weird. It's got to do with the thermodynamics of how rubbers expand, and it's because all of the rubber molecules in there are much more ordered when you pull it apart. And when they're more ordered, they can relax, and they give off some heat. But when you contract it, oh, they've got to tangle themselves back up again, and they've got to take in some heat to do that, so it feels cold, it takes some heat out of your lip. So that's a cool experiment to try. The thermodynamics of rubber bands. So that's a little bit about the latex rubber bands and the watermelons. I think we should find out a little bit more about how we're going to actually do the experiment. 